It's a lullaby. The cradling comes from the quarter eighth note Barcarol, sense of movement from the long to the short and balanced. <laughs> Introduces the melody inside as if when you hold a baby and you put a sleep, the baby's in the middle, inside, in the protected position, uh, placement. Uh, it's not. Um, <laughs> of the ostinato E flats embedding the melody which is mostly a scale so soothing step motion and only one tenth or third for the indication of the major mode by one note it could have been middle section will be in minor, but in the opening section is the plenitude of the well-being, the tenth in a disposition with all the E-flats and the melody coming out of that E-flat unison, trickling down rhythmically from the ascension from the fourth uh, with passing tones and then by sixth so the leaps up are very expressive and the um, repetitive Reassuringly, when you play it without the melody, you practice the um, soundscape 
in which you inject the melodic line but so subtly that it comes out progressively as appearing out of the um, chords. separately and then the music of the keys for immediate pronunciation of the sound, something like um, muted horns, and the bass also picked up on the edge of the key at the moment of fusion of the sound, as if you don't want to play with the fullness of the resonance, you just want to play with the first rays of the sound, like sun rays of a rising sun. Of course, if your fingers are slightly bent, then they don't play with the same length that they have not. At the same time, especially when the black keys are higher than the white, which is why I recommend the straight fingers, the forky fingers, which tips touch at the same time. threshold of the relatively piano to pianissimo, possibly to triple pianissimo, especially taking in account that the lowest notes of the action of the pianos are heavier. So if you play them in the middle, you have to play them louder because they're heavier in the middle than on the edge, where they speak on the moment of impact, because of the leverage of the action of the piano. avoid the unexpected, unwilling accent that comes out. And I think that the light right foot pedal can allow a little bit of smearing on the passing tone until the next harmony. you would play piano, pianissimo, dolce, dolcissimo. Um, of course, if you play porous and very reactive to the sense of resonance, you'll sound like Debussy. And you'll lack that intensity of the melodic line that goes on the long phrase. There's no echo cells. There is not anything but a continuous development of the melodic line which is a scale going up by a triad and again dropping scale and going up to the dominant to conclude. So nothing striking in terms of uh, melodic um, intervals purposely to just flow out from the chords from which or octaves from which it's embedded. difference of resonance or the of the voicing. It shouldn't be for the um, lullaby um, genre, which uh, Brahms is here um, conveying us to believe through a text 
by a poet which is put in an excerpt on the entrance of the piece. Schlaft sanft, mein Kind. Sleep sweetly, softly, mein child. Sleep, sleep. So it's a soothing moment. That's why I suggest to play the melody and the E flat of the right hands of um, uh, ostinato in the same color. sound quality, but play straight finger, five or four or three I suggest rather, or two even, but on the edge of the key and quickly down only by the speed of the finger dropping from the knuckle to the tip. Any extra weight from the arm and it's too much for the balance of the two hands. It has to play just by the resonance. Shift in the fifth beat. Five, six, one, two, four, five, six. To catch the sixth and eighth note on the lower bass, which will be in the bass. Six, one, two, three, four, five. Shift, six, play. One, two, three, four. Shift, five, and six, and play on the octaves. Crescendo, this is a hell of um, hairpin. register. Bells sound like echo in um, canon. Often, piano 
always have this sentiment of intense emotion which delays the downbeat from the sixth eighth note last beat of the bar before and becomes a hesitant six and one especially because the first beat in the left hand is displayed arpeggiated I think it's wrong I think one should stay longer on the long value here and then on the sixth beat directly flow into the next first uh, and not stay in suspension expectation on the sixth beat because it gives it a sense of unnatural feeling to go for the melody up a fourth eighth note quarter like in the opening of course you only get one note in the bass then and here you have three plus three with arpeggio I think that the right hand could start while the left hand displays the downbeat arpeggio for the melody on top. Or you can also allow the left hand to be less displayed and play more tightly the 10th arpeggio. So that you feel that same that the 6th beat flows into the 1st beat. Uh, possibly crossing a leap of octave after the leap of fourth, sixth, and octave on the hemiola raised fourth degree in the bass with the melodic move to the sixth and dominant fifth. bunch of the chords in the accompaniment. He doesn't have full triads in the left hand ever. He has two out of three sounds. To allow for the third sound if it is in the E flat triad, E flat G, B flat to be in the melody. So it acts as a B flat for the melody as well as a B flat for the triad. So this way he doesn't um, um, overburden with weight and heaviness the harmonic element compared to the melodic component. For instance, it would have been if he wanted to be more harmonically filled, but not. He lets it just resonate by the tenth for the major triad, the melody, and all the tonics are dubbing in the hemiola in the of before the hemiola, first in the ostinato. sounds I wanted to say. No finishing with fifth. But just the third. No fifth. And then when he transitions to the middle section in E flat minor, this becomes more evident why. As the bridge to the minor. There's not one single 
little D natural, it's all. It's minor melodic descending. And therefore the Pio Adagio middle section is fully in E flat minor. parts in a dialogue as if he uh, fragments it purposely in answering would you like I don't know oh please I'll think about it but insisting with the diminished third I don't know and puffing and always exhaling tirara tirara of the middle section is off a bit and creating a hairpin and that, I think the exhaling is to do with the expression of um, uh, deep um, sadness possibly uh, short breath oh. Oh. As if each of the elements of each fragment which are spread on the four bars could be full pieces by themselves. Let's say, imagine for a second. Naturally, at least to me, because of the experience of all the pieces he wrote, as well as the pieces we love of him he wrote. But in this case, he goes from one unfinished, untold, barely opened story telling. If you only knew with a syncopation keeping us an expectation, echoed by not another cell of the same, but almost as if um, an echo acquiescence. And we would expect if it was just a simple dialogue to give, which is not totally either. It could have been, but cheesy, because predictable, which I think mostly cheesy is predictable. What if 
is not a such bad idea to imagine because the what if make us even appreciate not only more but truly the meaning sense of what is and not what if it could have been else and then we appreciate how to play in interpretation terms this starting of a storytelling interrupted with an echo of a memory from the past perhaps that is not totally related and he picks up on his storytelling which he dropped to re-echo a second time that is almost expected but the harmony chromatically drives us to an interruption and when he picks up again the answer is still nobody's here in other words there is a sense of yearning innerly in minor compared to the radius major the solar major the bright major the soothing major here is the anguish minor in syncopations make us long for what would have been but is not as if fragments of memories come to mind in the middle section of E flat minor with the left hand arpeggiation more like a sitar, guitar, harp any plucked instrument that would have a harmonic lute-like or teorbo-like resonance with a deep bass but very soft this way displaying the triads of the opening which were played together here they are like displayed slow arpeggio that goes to the shores of the third and sixth eighth note in the rest. The rest of relatively the residue of resonance is not totally cut as a sign. Well, it could, but it might not need be in order to have the melody peak on the third, which well the all thirds, on the second of the three then melodic notes. of fragmented regrets that starts, stops, and restarts, and restops, and every time the hairpin perhaps becomes a little bit heavier of emotional and harmonic and syncopated um, inner inflation uh, compared to already we have the um, semitone with the reason E natural, and here is between F going in the G flat, a diminished third, and not resolved but dropped by the triton. But, but harmonized rarely because mostly triads with a half diminished seventh minor, uh, seventh with diminished fifth. So, compared to the very pristine search for lake surface mirror color minimalism of harmonic dress-up. Here we have the contrary, a plethora of dark harmonic dress-up.
this kind of dwelling over the notes uh, of the piece is um, a favorite thing to do for most pianists, most likely not in public, obviously. But um, this um, allows to uh, bathe in the atmosphere of the piece, of the section, of the mood, of the uh, concept, not only, but of the uh, meaning of it. Naturally, if you mix up more minor with major, you have bittersweet middle section. If you only say very minor, as he's mostly holding, even with the Napolitan six, of course, all these harmonies, he predilectically uses the minor middle section in opposition to the luminous major. major and minor as he could have, or a semi-major, uh, major third with a minor sixth. He doesn't do In order to preserve the um, darkness of the minor in the middle section and the dynamic marking is very difficult to observe for most pianists because the uh, piano dolce of the opening andante moderato the andante is walking the piano is not pianissimo and the dolce is sweet which means edges very very rounded so nothing should be accented and nothing should be angular everything should be soothing Assuring, which it is, and then therefore the più adagio, which means more at ease, more slow, ad agio in Italian, originally it was in two words, but that is of course meaningfully slower than andante, since adagio is metronomically indicated as slower in the indications of Menzel's metronome, but still above grave, obviously, or largo, but um, that means a little loosely slower, which is already not that easy because it's not that fast. <laughs> If it was the same tempo, so loosely slower becomes syllabic for the melodic connection of the length of sound for the hairpin that unites them or bridges them with inside a group of three notes. And you want to avoid that the hairpin becomes a sea sickening um, roller coaster of emotional facts. Microscopic pianissimo sempre ma molto espressivo. So it's a whisper of intense pain, but without to go overstated into mezzo forte. Then drop. In the roller coaster of emotional waves up and down. Well, all this remains at the level of the hint whisper in the excel in, in, in exhaling. Oh, how much? Interrupted emotional short, um, well, a fragment obviously, of elements which have to remain under the pianissimo while the melody in the opening has to be melodically brighter. To obtain piano and to obtain pianissimo. I'm with flutter fingers in the right hand, sliding the keys as soon as they touch, and perhaps play with half pedals in order to give up a little bit of the resonance before the eighth note rest on the fifth and uh, sorry third and sixth note, but not dry. not heavy. To avoid having to play the opening mezzo forte and then and the challenge is not only in the right hand but in the left hand to play this 
these heavy bass notes of the action of the keyboard, pianissimo, not to cover the melody, which already, already has to be whispered. second and more intense time with a diminished third, it seems almost loud. As if piano compared to pianissimo is that much higher, which really it isn't. There is piano, no more pianissimo. Seems so brighter, too bright. The chromaticism. Sixth, the diminished sevens, the harmonic minors, the interruption, pianissimo, like a parenthesis, and continuing, picking back from the little ne Neapolitan, and two bars, bridging return. Is the first G natural? G, well, natural G, which is the major third in the flat, is that bridging this last two, last bar to the return of the opening, he prepares that common major third, which is sort of finishing in a Picardy third of sorts of the E flat minor middle section, which is kind of awkward to call it Picardy, but it is a major third in minor, which becomes naturally major in major. For holding the pedal through between the last chord in the bottom of the middle section and the return of the melodic uh, higher register of the opening. So, in the opening page, compared to the recap third page, the melody is embedded in the octaves in the right hand and it's tucked inside, as I said, like almost as if you hold in the room whenever the, uh, the, the lullaby is singing. Whenever the last time. You think it will be finally above, which it is in octaves, but this time he places the E flat that was in the same octave above, almost like as if in the heavenly sounds or bells, and alternating the melodic line between the two hands, the right hand and left hand. Um, usage of the phrasing is one thing, but the usage of the complete frame of the piano is another. So he really purposely started with a minimal amount of notes, and in the third page after the middle minor, in the return, he spreads it on three, four octaves uh, of range. Still keeping the melody tucked inside by spreading more the hemiolas and the ostinatos and the suspended ostinatos. Oh yes. Mostly a visit to the secondary dominant, which we had the first time with A 
natural, which is five or five and one. And here it's uh, because of the intertwined sixteenth note inside decoratively. important but essential thing for the performer is not to make a ritenuto with the diminuendo. Let the diminuendo deflate from the secondary dominant to the real dominant and return. And don't delay the first beat. But don't add to it a ritenuto on top of the diminuendo and then return to the key and do. It's too ending before the end. It shouldn't. It should be flowing, gently but flowing. Un poco pio andante compared to the pio adagio or the original andante moderato. So it's almost as if the child falling asleep, you're trying to be a little less fast in your speech, but still very much cradle in the melodic line. The necessity, he still writes Dolce. I think by now it's clear. Exploring another secondary dominant to the third degree, and so what? And a little canon. But he stops doing it while he uh, has the Himiola. This is done to bring the um, piece to a conclusion by a sense of rhythmic calming down from sixteenth notes to eighth notes to eighth note to quarter notes and then to a frozen dotted quarter on the dominant with the leading tone D and you expect and that is the last moment instead of doing what most composers would do which is when you want to avoid the five one perfect cadence to end and you want to delay it while you want to have the melody leading tone go to the tonic, you would do a deceptive cadence to delay and then finish. Here he goes five, stays frozen with the longest value dotted quarter compared to the 16 eighth note quarters that preceded and then goes to four. So it is five, doesn't finish like the end of the first uh, page with the legal direct four to one, but he hints that it's important to hug that fourth degree to the point to which we are frozen on the dominant, expecting the end. That fourth degree comes like a hug. The chromaticism is a regret. And the sixth fourth of the dominant is a reassurance. And finally, the anticipation of the tonic on the dominant, and then all. Again, only two notes out of three. There is the third, the dominant, the fifth, and the tenth on top. So this position with the same pedal of these three chords highlights differently the simple triad would have been in most cases evacuated in the low register to calm down and disappear by the low register and here as if we will do that and then we have the high luminous that nobody expected because it was all going down from Third, after we had it 
So I can imagine him enjoying himself on the piano uh, with the pedal down and searching for the perfect combination in his ears of harmonic resonances, how they fill up, how many G thirds, how many E flat tonics, where do I give a little bit more of a hint of a fifth and where it will resonate longer and he must have just delected himself in searching the... He didn't do any of this, but it doesn't matter, it's fun to imagine. In any case, to play, I think it's important to keep the straight fingers. So, the, no matter what length of the finger, third longer than fifth, black key higher than the white, they speak at the same time and they speak soft on the edge of the key. If not, they would be too loud, or missing, or not together. And uh, therefore, the rhythmicity of their placement is very important and you cannot afford or shouldn't afford to have them misspeak, ill speak or not speak totally. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you prepare the disposition, you have it ready as a pre-formatted um, imprint, you go on the keys you prepare and when it's time after you count it, you just fluff down the keys, the fingers without weight from the arm, just from the hand, meaning from the palm of the hand. And the voice. This openness of the tenth or the third is the most soothing and not the any. Sh he doesn't end with a tonic in the top like. the tenth. One feels like holding it till it the, the sound waves completely disappear and one really gets totally to surrender to sleep. At least the performer hopefully not. The audience sometimes in a good sense, yes. And the listener, soothingly so. Thank you. <laughs>